which is going to lead me into my point of I need to stop buying anime figures because <laughs> I have seven hundred dollars in active pre-orders right now. Shut up. So for the time being, I'm kind of done buying anime figures. Hello and welcome to The Nerdiest Podcast, where nerds t -t -t talk about nerdy things. I'm one of your hosts, as always, Mr. Jackson Glass, with my ride or die, Mr. Nick Barrett. Sir, how has your week been? You know, it was great until today. Because the fall allergies just hit me like a truck. I don't know. You can probably hear it in my voice. You can see it on my face because my nose is beet red because I've been blowing my mm -hmm. nose so much. I'm just going to get this out of the way. If you see the camera turn off, it's probably because I'm blowing my nose. <laughs> and I, I would assume the audience doesn't want to look at that. Mm -hmm. So if you see my video, just go to like my Discord profile right. picture or whatever. That's why. Don't worry about it. <laughs> don't, don't, don't don't worry, worry about, about it. it. Don't say it. Don't think it. It's fine. Oh. Other than that, it's been a pretty chill week. I have a couple of things I'm going to hit on here, and I'm going to try to hit on them in a quick-ish way. Mm -hmm. For starters, it's been a week. I've been going to the gym, doing my work. Good stuff. Whole nine yards. Actually recorded, edited, and put out an extra video mm -hmm. on the Loki Season 1 Steelbook, which... You can go check out now on the YouTube. On you can YouTube. see, like, I just immediately fell into the YouTube. I love that. Yeah, you like gestured thing. like we could put like, an end card right there, and you were like, "Yeah, we can, can put watch an end it screen. right here." <laughs> you can put an end screen a minute into a podcast episode. Uh, what are you talking about? I don't about? think you um, can. <laughs> so there was that. Um, I have a couple things that I bought Ooh. that I'm going to show off that Where Jackson doesn't this? know that I bought. Okay, so one of them is from Target. Okay. The other one is going to lead into my second thing, okay. which I have not told you about. Oh, um, The exciting. first one, well, two things I bought from Target today. I bought a 64-ounce um, giant water bottle <laughs> that I've already decorated with stickers and stuff nice. um, because I don't drink enough water because, I'll be honest, I really hate, because my room is upstairs mm -hmm. and the water is downstairs. And I really hate having to get up and go downstairs <laughs> to refill my water. So I kind of like just slowly sip on my water so uh -huh. it lasts me all day. Whereas with this, there's a lot more water in here. Mm -hmm. And it also feels a lot more productive to go downstairs and be like, yeah, let me fill up my 64 ounce right. water bottle. Um, So that's cool. I also bought this. Okay. It's called Manwa, not okay. manga Wait. because it's Korean. Oh. Okay? Manga is Japanese. Manwa is Korean. It's also fully colored on the inside. Interesting. Um, so this is The World After the Fall, which is one, Books A Million had volume two and three, but they never had volume one. And I saw volume one at Target today, and I was like, well, I got to buy that. It also helped because it was 20% off face price. Interesting. And there was also an additional 20% off coupon today. So it was 40% off. Mm -hmm. So it was like a pretty good steal. Um the other thing I bought, which is going to lead into my next point, okay. is I have my first ever Nendoroid, okay. which okay. are like these cute little figures of pop culture and stuff. I got Monica from DDLC because I also went on and pre-ordered Sayori and Yuri, um, which is going to lead me into my point of I need to stop buying anime figures because <laughs> I have $700 in active pre-orders right now. Shut um, up. Yeah, Shut I up. have the Sayori Nendoroid, the Yuri Nendoroid, the Link Nendoroid, the Zelda Nendoroid, a figure of Mio from Xenoblade Chronicles 3, a figure of Goblin Slayer from Goblin Slayer, and a $300 figure of Meat Surdy from Demon Slayer. Um, so, Stop. for the time You're being, kidding. I'm kind of done buying anime figures. But here's the thing. Is none of those are coming until next year. You're lying. The earliest one that comes is the Lincoln Zelda Nendoroid, which ship, quote, 
Q1 2024, <laughs> which is any time between January and March. Is Nendoroid and then, like the new Funko Pop? Like, is that? Yes. They're better okay. than Funko Pops, TDH. Why? Because Monica has like a completely different faceplate that you can take off, a bunch of different poses. So, like, it doesn't have to be this one. Okay. They're like action, fi- they're more like action figures than Funko Pops, okay. TDH. Because they do come with a bunch of pieces that you can rearrange. And, like, the Link one from Breath of the Wild, you can have him with his hood, without his hood, on a horse, not on a horse. Like, there's all this stuff you can put with it. Um, th- The other thing that <laughs> landed me as being $700 deep in pre-orders is I ordered most of them from the Good Smile US shop. And Good Smile doesn't charge you until they ship. So I haven't oh. actually paid out seven hundred dollars. I just have seven hundred dollars worth of pre-orders, <sighs> which is so hard. You because it's one of those like you're not. It's not costing me now, and I have time <laughs> to save up for it. <laughs> it's very addictive. I told myself I cannot uh, buy any more until I have the money set aside for the ones that I've already pre-ordered. That is kind of awful (laughs) yeah what right you wow okay i and you're still and you're trying to upgrade the setup too after that's we talked about this on the after show the the last one we recorded Mm -hmm. um it's about how it's about how you set your money aside right the whole like studio setups is a completely separate chunk of my paycheck that like buying figures is in right you're not like but oh, once I you have once I have the but... studio setup paid off, all of the money that's going towards saving for that can then go towards the figures, yeah. which will then pay them off in like three paychecks. Listen, so it's really not that much. Three paychecks, he said. Pay- they'll get hey. paid off in three paychecks. It's not that bad when you really think about it. Uh, it's not that bad. I think it's that bad when I really no. <laughs> think about it. No. It's oh. not that bad. I do have to ask though. First of all, manga versus manhwa, what's the difference? Is it just culture? Um, The main difference that I understand, I haven't read a ton, mm-hmm. is manhwa is, one, it's read normally. Oh, it's read from front to normally. air quote It's read from, from right left to, to left. left. Or left to right, yeah, yeah. Like, we read it here in the U.S. Um, mm-hmm. It's written... Like, it's just the Korean version of manga, but mm-hmm. it's also fully colored on the inside, which makes... This was $20. But in my mind, $20 for a, f- like, full volume with a bunch of chapters and it's fully colored? Yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Like, at that point, I'm like, the extra $10 as opposed to, like, a normal manga that isn't right. colored, I'm like, mm, yeah, yeah what's the I, line? Think, I think that's fair. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, that makes um, sense. So yeah, that's all I've done. I haven't watched a ton. I haven't played a ton. I've been mm-hmm. so busy doing YouTube and podcast stuff that I haven't had the time to really sit down and watch anything. Um, I've been watching like I started Goblin Slayer. I started. I did start this really nice anime that is um what is it? I think it's Saint Cecilia and Pastor Lawrence, and it's like this. It's this cute little wholesome romance anime between a saint and a priest, and it's like just kind of wholesome. That's like, no, gotta be like not. That's no way. That's correct. <laughs> no, I'm, like, I'm uh, telling you, it's correct. I've watched like half of it. No, and it's like just, there's no way that a saint and a priest could like date. There's no way that's okay, <laughs> dude. It's so wholesome. It's so fun. <laughs> I haven't continued it yet. Yeah. Um, because I've had other shows I've been watching and catching up on, which I have a point about that. But I'm gonna save it because yeah. we're this is a double record weekend. Woohoo! So yeah. if you want to hear my thoughts on, here's my tease. Um, yeah. I finally understand why people watch reality TV. Thank you. <laughs> That'll be my tease. I'm so excited. Coming in two weeks. Wait till next week. No, it's next, next week. week. Next, oh my gosh, you're so freaking right. So it's coming That's back why next we're week. doubling up this week. Yeah, you're right. Um, I cannot keep track of our freaking schedule anymore. Um, I will also say two more things, and then I'll pass it back over to Jackson. I know I've had it for a while. Wait, um, I have a question. I have a question. Okay. Was the girl at that Books A Million when you went and got no, the book? I got this at Target. 
Oh, okay. When you were at Books a Million, was that girl there? No, I haven't gone back to Books a Million since then. Okay, okay. If Context. you want to know what we're talking about... Context. Go listen to episode two of the Nerdiest After Show, Rising Up the Books a Million Girl, which segues very nicely. Thank you for setting me up yes, for that. I, I do feel kind of bad to our listening audience because we just kind of threw up the the first two episodes or the only two episodes at the we moment. We just kind of threw up. <laughs> Of the after show on Spotify as like paid episodes with no explanation. And I didn't realize when we were uploading that there would be no context as to why those episodes got uploaded. So essentially, they were just the Patreon exclusive. Now they're like, they'll be on YouTube when mm-hmm. we have YouTube memberships. They'll are, they're on Spotify now. And you can like pay a month, like uh, I think it's three dollars a month. Yeah, three and a month. And you can have access to those episodes, and you'll get all of them. Not like it's not like a per episode thing. It's uh-huh. you get all of them for one monthly fee. Um, but we put them up there one because I don't know. I as a listener, I would be more inclined to listen to a bonus show if it was on the platform that I listen on, and right. not have to listen on Spotify or on Patreon. So that's where they got uploaded. Feel free to check them out. Support mm-hmm. the show. We do great things. There's a new one every month. Maybe at some point we'll increase the frequency. But right now, one extra episode a month just helps support the show. Yep. Super exciting. The second thing is we're like 10 minutes into the episode and we have not said what we're talking about. We are reviewing the entirety Woo-hoo. of the Ahsoka Disney Plus series, which I will tell you now, if you've seen any of our other episodes i think it was the my big fat greek wedding episode because that was where um Mm -hmm. episode five had just come out and i talked about it this episode's gonna be very interesting yeah there are going to be a lot of hot takes a lot of interesting opinions and it's just gonna be a really interesting episode that's probably gonna be pretty controversial so you're gonna want to stay tuned Mm -hmm. to hear that also spoilers for ahsoka the clone wars and rebels (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah, because yeah. Um, yeah. So for the if you're not caught up on the nerdiest podcast lore, Jackson has only seen one of those three shows, and it's Ahsoka. Yeah. Um, so he's not a Clone Wars or a Rebels fan. Nope. I grew up with the Clone Wars. I've watched all of Rebels, and I am very much a hardcore fan of both. So how this is going to go is going to be very and so, interesting. As someone, I went into Ahsoka so freaking blind. Like, I had never seen The Clone Wars, never seen Rebels. Some people were kind of upset that I was watching it. They were like, you can't do that. And I was like, watch me. I'm doing it. Like, we, so, yeah. Stay tuned later. Got some fun, fun stuff coming up. Uh, My week was pretty good. Uh, Nothing, nothing crazy. Just a lot of schoolwork, a lot of work work, um, lots of podcast work. Um, nope, there he goes to blow his nose. So sad. Poor boy. Um, but, yeah, just lots of work. Um, I got to MC an open mic night, which was really fun yesterday. Um, so I'm really leaning into my, like, host personality. And so that's been really fun. I have not been watching or listening or I've not been watching or playing a whole lot of stuff just because of time because of school and this week I'm really grinding so that I can go out of town for fall break and I'm just I just got to get to the freaking mountains dog I've got to get in a cabin and turn off and disconnect so that I can come I back with so fresh hard. ideas um so that's very exciting very exciting stuff going on i started uh posting on youtube again on my personal youtube uh which is the glass studios g-l-a-s studios if you did not know uh just kind of revitalizing the channel and switching up the content a bit i just did an editing breakdown of uh the short film that we did um grandma's garden so i'm sure there'll be a link to that in the description uh the glass studios i'm trying to do trying to do some more consistent content on there and so that's super exciting also here's the thing i need i need to get real for a second i need i need to know if this is a safe space before i say this i don't know it depends on what you're gonna talk this about. isn't about poop this time okay then you're good it's not about poop this time um guys 
I'm going to be so freaking real, but I'm also going to pose a question. And this is an interesting thing that I feel like is a common trend that's happening right now. Okay. Do you feel like your feet are getting stinkier? Oh my God. No, this is a legitimate question. This is a legitimate question. I've talked to like three different people and I'm like, dude, why are my feet getting stinkier? And like, I come home, like I get up at like 6.30 and I do homework and I go to class and I finish at like 3 and I come back here and I'm like, dude, I can smell my own freaking feet and I have to change socks and that's so gross. And everyone else is like, yeah, my feet have smelled really bad too. Do you feel like this is an epidemic? I feel like if you have to change your socks, you should go to the doctor. <laughs> But like, I'm not the only not one. Normal. Also, no, that's what maybe I'm saying. That's, okay, how recent is this? Because maybe that's what the negative impact of that emergency alert system thing was. Oh you my know, where gosh, everybody was you're like, so right. Can we hold on? Can we talk about that for a second? Like how oh my gosh. that was. Everyone the was emergency like, the, alert system is the reason my feet are stinky. Everyone's like, guys. The government is going to send a notification to our phones, <laughs> and when they send the notification to our phones. They're gonna start the zombie apocalypse. Yeah, where people are gonna die. <laughs> and it's or like all the Christians were like, "This is it. This, this is, is the it. rapture. This is the rapture. All of our we're phones are gonna go off, and that's the that's the trumpets." And I'm like, "Yeah." And I'm like, "Guys, it's it's literally just them testing out the alert system. This is not new. I we're, feel like we're like the only country that doesn't use our phones for any kind of national alert." Yeah, Japan because does everyone it has one. <laughs> Europe does it. This is not like this is just an us thing, right? This is not a like, we're guys. like low key behind. Like this is not world. a good thing. Yeah, end of the world. I was in the cafeteria when it went off, like in a room with like a hundred people, and it was the worst cacophony of sound I'd ever heard in my life. It was just Did yours go off phones. two minutes early too. Yes, <laughs> it absolutely. Somebody did. got fired. Can you imagine, though, being the guy that had to press that button and just, like, is just imagine that is the worst wrong number text you could ever do in your life. Is like everyone in, a, in America gets that text, it says, you up. Like, that is amazing. Also, I think we should do more, more emergency alerts, and I think you should have to solve I a little know. puzzle to turn it off. That's what I think. <laughs> oh, I can go in my settings and turn it off right now. <laughs> I, Which I kind mean, of defeats the purpose of doing yeah. it if you can turn it off. Right. Like, I'm going to turn it off and then be like, oh, there's an earthquake. Who was going to tell me? Oh, you turned your freaking emergency alert off. <laughs> Am I an awful person for turning off Amber Alerts? <laughs> This is a moral question I did not expect am to get I, into today. Am I? Um, Hold on. No, I don't think you are. And I've, if I'm being completely honest, and someone can tell me, I legitimately want to know. Oh, there we go. I no, legitimately want to know. All mine are mm. off. Legitimately. Amber alerts, emergency alerts, public safety alerts, test Stop. alerts are off. Test alerts are off, so why did I get the thing? I think they overrid that, and I think... But it's a test alert, and I have my test alerts turned <laughs> off. <laughs> well, here's what's interesting, though, is Apple very consistently will go against Sell the government. Sell out to the government? Yeah, yeah. And so, like, they... Apple won't even give over phones to the FBI. Like, they're like, no, it val like violates our user policy, which makes me feel but secure as an Apple user, but, but also, but like... Wait, Bro. So what does <laughs> Apple cared about user policy? Aren't, didn't they get in trouble for selling off people's data? So they had to put like the Ask app not to track yeah. as a legal loophole? Yeah. No. Apple just wants to keep making money, and they will change things so that they can keep making maximum yeah. profits. But heaven forbid we have Fortnite Mobile. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. They were really... <laughs> <laughs> That's where Heaven we draw the line. We give you a headphone jack. <laughs> uh. That's where we draw the line. It's Fortnite Mobile. <laughs> There's plenty That's... of space on the bottom of my phone, by the way, for a headphone jack. If you guys want to put it back. There's even some on the top right there. Like I don't yeah, know. There, if you, you know, remember when they used to be on the, the top side. next to the lock button? There's some on the side. <laughs> 
Dude, I miss when oh. the lock button was on the top. That was kind of fun. Yeah, because probably... I used to be able to slam my phone into the table and <laughs> like lock it as why I did... was doing it. Why would you do that? <laughs> I don't know. I was like 12. That's base. I had an I iPhone that. 4 that was passed down to me Dang. through like four people. Huh. Okay. Well, anyway, we have a little bit of news. Just one topic that I'm actually low-key kind of excited about. Oh, I is that we just we just got announced was Lego Animal Crossing is coming. Ba, ba, ba. Oh wait, wrong song. Um, bum 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 bum. I just want to say, I'm very glad that they are minifigures and not yes. like the weird brick abominations that the Mario ones are. Yes. Um, I'm really interested to see. This is one of those like lines that will end up being really successful because you want to buy every single set because yeah. there's going to be like a town hall. There's a cap in minifigure, which means there's going to be like a beach dock or yep. like a, um, a little boat Cap'n's Island. Right. Uh, there will definitely be villager houses like maybe a store. I really hope Museum. they do a creator three in one for yes. like your your house yes. where you can customize all of the like different aspects of your house like you can in the game. That'd be it's phenomenal. a very it's one of those themes that just kind of makes sense. It does. Because it, it's like Minecraft. Like mm -hmm. oh yeah, that just makes sense that there would be Lego Minecraft and right. Lego Animal Crossing. So, I also think you're hitting a similar target audience. I think people that people that play Animal Crossing are probably buying Legos if that makes sense. Like you just got to think about your... Exactly. And me too. I feel like you're hitting that target audience of like <laughs> people that play cozy games and are like really into retail therapy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that's your target audience right there. And like myself included, that's wholeheartedly me. They and know. so they know. They know all the Animal Crossing girlies are about to be all over them Lego sets. So I'm also glad to see Nintendo continuing to branch out into Legos because that means Mario was successful enough that they want to do it. Even though, please let I Zelda be next. Please let Zelda be next and get. Please, also, I don't ask for much from Lego aside from lowering the prices. <laughs> let Zelda be next, please. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Thank you. Also, give us some Mario sets that are have minifigures, please. Por oh, favor. Wait. All right. I right. can tell you, oh, Zelda shoot. is coming for sure. Oh, um, I heard from an inside source like, I don't know, six months ago, um, and I saw the picture. There was a picture of a Lego Zelda set. I can't show it huh. on right. screen at right. all. Not that I was going to. That's too much editing work. Right. Um, <laughs> but it's of the Deku tree, Ooh. and there's a version with like green leaves leaves that has like ocarina of time link but then there's also a version with pink leaves that has breath of the wild link and zelda mm, so it's kind of like that cool, two in though. one and it's supposed to be coming next year it's gonna be so freaking expensive and i'm like dude please let it be a, please let it be a line and not just yeah, one one not off just a set. special creator set. like they they've done a whole line for mario They've mm -hmm. done a whole line for Animal Crossing, assuming. They're not just going to do one Animal right. Crossing set. Please do a whole line for Zelda. I've been asking for this since I was like 14. Yeah. I will legitimately buy every single one of these. <laughs> that's, how I, that's how I go into debt. 2024 will, is the year I just go broke. I will no cancel money. my anime figure pre-orders and use that $700 so it's funny, to I go actually, to these. <laughs> I actually can't cancel them. Ugh. Um, no. I'm locked in. No. So you. That's cool. I'm telling Dave Ramsey, you cannot no, continue. No, don't. Like it's this. not feasible to build a life without <laughs> credit. Do you have a credit card? No. Exactly. <laughs> what are you uh, talking about? <laughs> you could have gotten so much credit for your seven hundred dollars of freaking anime figures. What are you talking could about? I? Could yes, I? you could because have. they haven't yes. charged my card yet. You. Oh no exchange gosh. of money has been made. Oh my gosh. But you that's what I'm saying. You like have you used your debit card? Yeah. 
You it's the only card I have. You need to get a credit card. I'm. Uh, thank you, Captain. <laughs> I'm well aware. Uh, my mom's not even in the country to help me do it right now. Oh. So it's kind of like a. It's I been pushed off to late fall. Yeah. I forgot we she was no, out of the country. Uh, I bet you thought you were going to get some news on me getting a credit card. Unfortunately, <laughs> Unfortunately. we don't have anything to share with you right at this time. Please be patient and stay tuned for more information. We'll be able to bring you more information in winter 2023. Dang. Rip. I was really looking forward to that drop, though. Um, the You getting a credit card drop. Um, oh, I thought you were talking about Lego Animal Crossing. <laughs> Yo, no. Lego Animal Crossing building live stream. Uh, let's go. I'm saying it's it's coming. It's I gotta coming. know what the sets are first, but it's coming. It's coming. What other are there other Nintendo games you think would work for Lego sets, or we, is this kind of Zelda? Aside from Zelda, Zelda's the next obvious one. Um, I think there are a bunch of themes that would be great as one-offs. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I think Mario should get some minifigure scale stuff because those brick things are ugly as heck. Um, I think. Metroid would be a cool one, even if you just did like Samus's ship. Same for Star Fox. Like, just give us the Star Fox right. ships. One big set, one big Metroid set. Kirby's kind of the same way. You could probably squeeze a line out of Kirby. I think you um, could. I think there's an audience for it. Splatoon would yeah. make a great. I think that would be another good wave. Um, I would love Xenoblade Legos, <laughs> but I know that's not going to happen. It would never happen. It would never... The, the games don't sell well enough. The, no. Heartbreakingly, none of the Xenoblade games have sold over 3 million copies, and it breaks no. my heart. No. Because they're Please. so good. But no yeah. one plays them. I'll also say, in defense of LEGO Mario, they're not... They did something different that was obviously successful, and it's actually really cool. Like, some of my family owns a lot of... Like, a ton of the LEGO Mario stuff, and it's low-key fun. And it uh it encourages you to like build it and like continue playing with it, because a lot of I think Lego is leaning more into now the like display sets because they know their audience is adults with money, and so we've fallen away from the sets more. Even when I was younger, like has not this has been a recent change, of the sets that you're intended to play with. Like they're not just meant to sit on the shelf. You're meant to play with it. It was a toy, yeah. and ne now it's a display item. And so, I don't know. That's my I that's mean, my defense of Lego Mario. <laughs> I feel like they've gone in polar opposite directions. Like, mm -hmm. either a set is meant to be play played with in its entirety, right. or it's a display piece. Right. Because they do have a lot more sets that are geared towards adults, mm -hmm. um, which are the ones I end up liking. I saw the... The Viking Village at Target oh, today. Oh, yes. And it looks so cool. I want that one. I also told my coworkers, because uh, I was at work when the Animal Crossing thing got announced. I told them, I was like, guys, I finally figured out what I'm going to fill my office with. I'm building an Animal Crossing <laughs> town on my desk. I have a nice, like, there's my desk, and then there's, like, another tier above it oh, that yeah. is completely empty aside from my yeah. diffuser. And I'm like, I'm building my Animal Crossing town. <laughs> right there right here and they were all like go for it do uh, it god bless and i was like yes thank you you guys are encouraging my poor spending habits and retail therapy nice all right well we'll do movie watching competition and then we'll get right into a shot i'm so excited for this i'm, I'm so excited i excited cannot for... wait okay for the movie watching competition yeah oh yeah okay i'm so excited you're gonna be so mad did you break a hundred I'm not saying you gotta pull out. Oh your, gosh! All right, we gotta do the thing. I I gotta double check my. I don't know why I double check my duplicates. It's not like <laughs> I, I haven't do. I'm gonna watch Weathering with you in between now, and not the next episode because that's tomorrow. Right. Um, but the episode but, after that. Okay. Um, as of October seventh, time of recording, 2023, I've seen 93 movies. All right. So. As of October 7th, 2023, I've seen 87 movies. Oh. Oh. Why would you do that to me? I thought you were <laughs> going to say like 106 <laughs> movies. I hate you. I cannot believe you did that. <laughs> See, do you know why that's really funny? Why? Because that's the same number as the last episode. <laughs> 
You have not watched a single movie. I haven't watched a movie Listen, since my big fat Greek wedding three. I only. Here's the thing. I never. Wa- I the only reason I've seen movies is because other people invite me to see movies, and I'm like, sure, whatever. And so I've seen. I saw like a haunting in Venice. Or I watched Theater Camp on Hulu just because some people were like, okay, let's just do that. Or like I was went over to someone's house and we watched Jojo Rabbit. Like, Or I was at a big event and we all watched Ratatouille. And so it's stuff like that. That's where most of my movie intake is right now because I just don't have the time to sit down and watch a movie. Um, right. But I also... That's, that's exactly where I am at. Yeah. Is I just... It's so much easier for me to sit down at night when I finish working Mm -hmm. on like podcast stuff or I get home from small group or young adults like to just then sit down and watch a couple episodes of anime and then go to bed. Yeah. Because I don't have the time. I'm not a person who can watch a movie halfway through and then stop be like, okay, time to go to bed. Stop and then pick it up the next day. I like watching movies all the way through. I've also and we talked about this a couple episodes ago. I'm just burnt out on movies. Like yeah. I have not had the desire to watch movies. Now that I know you're at 93, I might kick it up a little bit. <laughs> I don't know if I want to lose. Yeah. Um, I really don't want to lose. So if we get on the next episode after the one, like the two episodes from now, mm-hmm. I think two episodes from now, because that's our end of the month episode. Oh, coming out on October 30th. Yeah. Um, I think one of us will have broken a hundred. Surely, so that's because we're also in stay spooky. Tuned. We're also in spooky movie territory now, and so oh, I hate spooky movies. Here's the thing: <sighs> Can I be so just? I got to be freaking real. Does this have to do with stinky? It doesn't feet have again? to do with stinky feet or poop. Okay. I first of all, apparent. I'm just a. I'm six years old. Like I think that stuff is so funny. Ha ha. Uh, second of all spooky movies aren't good i i'm sorry but like there's this whole culture that's obsessed with like like hocus pocus and like hocus pocus is okay i've seen it three times twice and it's never hit for me i don't know if i'm just not the target audience and I feel like if you don't like horror movies, there is a lack of like spooky, fun family movies that you can watch. And I may just be completely um, out of the. Okay. Sir? Oh, sorry, Haunted Did Mansion. Did you forget about the hit classic Haunted Mansion 2023? I mean, yeah, that's a good one. I, I kind of want to rewatch that one. I, Starring Ahsoka star Rosario Zario Dawson? Dawson? Actually, so. Yeah. And Danny DeVito for some and reason. Loki star Owen Wilson. <laughs> See, I just, I just, I'm not a spooky movie girly. I can't. I'm not about that. I'm just waiting till I can watch Christmas movies. And I'm sorry. Me too. I'm sure there are some great spooky movies out there that I just haven't found. And so, drop your favorite spooky movie in the comments or in the description or shoot a DM because I want to enjoy them. I just can't find a good one that's not too scary. Like, I don't like scary movies, but I like spooky movies. And so, I think Nightmare Before Christmas is awesome. And it's a great Halloween movie. But I can't just watch Nightmare Before Christmas every year. (laughs) I still think you should watch Last Night in Soho. I would like it. I think you really like it. From a even just from a filmmaker's perspective, right. I think you really like, like it. it. It was really enjoyable. I, forgot I can almost guarantee you, right now, that my last thirteen movies will all be rewatched. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I said like I need to slow down on the rewatch. It. It's the only thing that's going to get me over a hundred at this yeah. point. Yeah. Because what so new movies are coming out? Um. I feel bad. The creator came out. I was really excited to see it, but then I canceled my Regal and Limited, so now I'm just waiting for it to hit a streaming service. Dang. Um, Which, I don't know. I probably won't be able to watch it wherever it goes, because it's a Fox movie, which means it's a Disney movie, which means it's going to go to Hulu. Hulu. But I have through Jackson. uh, I Well, one, I would be going to see it if I wasn't out of town next week. Um, But... 
I really want to see it because I saw this thing where how it was shot on like a four thousand dollar camera. What was that about? It wasn't four thousand. It was a cheaper camera. I'm trying to remember. He, he it was an eighty million dollar budget, which is a small budget for a sci fi movie in 2023. It's a small budget for a movie in 2023. Right, but it looks phenomenal. Like I, th- I'm really excited to see like the creativity used to make it look great on a small budget. You know, I think we really need more of that. Uh, and also kind of news question mark. I don't know. Um, five nights at Freddy's movies coming out soon. Very excited. Uh, we're going to go see it together. Oh, I forgot um, about that. But really. I just saw a thing that said that the movie has not even released and it broke even. And by literally by streaming and distribution rights, they have broken even on the movie. And I looked up the budget. I cannot remember what it is, unfortunately. I'm going to check that again. But they somehow managed to... Okay, movie was made on $25 million. $25 million. And they've already broken even because everyone wants to distribute it. And so I feel like FNAF might be one of the more profitable movies of the year because people are pretty excited for it and it's going to like all theaters and they're already broken even. So like any of the box office for this movie is going to be just straight profit, which is almost like we shouldn't make movies that cost Two hundred million dollars. What? Who was gonna say? Disney. It? What? <clears throat> Anywho, um, Marvel. What? What? Who? Wait. What? Lucasfilm. Um, what? Uh, also, Loki anyway. season two started. We'll. I haven't started it yet. I haven't started it yet. Uh, we'll do an episode on that later. For now, we're here to talk no, about. No, 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 no. Three things. Three One, things. It's great that FNAF made its budget back. Yes. Two. I feel very sad that. That movie is getting a simultaneous theaters and Peacock release. That is so sad. FNAF is? Because that's definitely going to hurt the theater Oh, that sales. sucks. Because it's the same day, October 27th. That's stupid. They're, which, I understand releasing a spooky movie closer to Halloween, but I feel like nowadays it's very hard to do that because you'll drop that movie at the end of October and then a week later everyone's already ready for Christmas and right. they don't want to go see a spooky movie. Yeah. So it almost should have been like a next week, like October right. 14th, 15th when onward you're in peak type spooky. movie. <laughs> right. Like, so that way it's still in theaters when you hit Halloween, but you've gotten most of your sales before right. Christmas hits. Right. Third thing. The Mario movie is back on top as highest grossing movie of the year after Barbie overtook for a brief period of time. Uh, I'm not overjoyed with how it got back there based on what I've said before, but it got back there. Did it get get re-released somewhere? It did for one day, one day for National Cinema Day. Oh, I did see that. Across the world, it got re-released and made $300,000 in like two days. <laughs> That's crazy. And put it Bro. back ahead of Barbie as the highest grossing movie of the year. I know I've said like I don't do re-releases. Here's the thing. I don't do re-releases. I think they're kind of dumb, especially if you're equating that to like box office success. But when it's for something like National Cinema Day... That makes sense. It's more about Not the heart a, like, behind the re-release. Oh, Avatar is just this little bit away from becoming the highest grossing movie of all time. So we're going to do a massive re-release and tell everyone that it's coming back. And I was like, yeah, I don't really care about that. Yeah. So, oh, speaking of things I don't care about, Disney Star Wars. Am yeah. I right, everybody? Am I right? All right. Let's get deep into... Can't wait to get flamed on the YouTube shorts comments for these shorts that are about to come out of this All right. So, general thoughts on Disney's Ahsoka starting. Context first. 
We said this at the beginning, just to recap. Ahsoka is Nick's favorite character and has been his entire life. Please consider his opinions with the grain of salt of he is an animation purist that is a diehard animated Ahsoka fan for his entire life. Consider that with his opinions. Also consider this with my opinions. I am not a diehard animated Ahsoka fan. I have seen the first five episodes of The Clone Wars. Nothing past that. I've not seen an episode of Rebels. And that's literally the entire reason we wanted to do this episode was we are on, we've never been on such opposite sides of a spectrum for a big show. And we were like, what a weird discussion it would be if someone who went in completely blind had a conversation with a super fan and like, how do their opinions differ? And so there's your context there in mind. I feel like, I got like I got kind of flamed for saying that I was going to watch Ahsoka without any context when I feel like I understood most of it. There is a lot Which of Which is good. There there is a lot of very subtle stuff that I'm that I was like that's probably something that I don't get and that's okay. Um and there's some some dots that I didn't connect by myself. And so I enlisted the help of some friends, some internet of like, okay, what happened in these characters? And I will watch the Clone Wars and uh, Rebels someday, but not now. Um, And so overall, I really enjoyed the show and understood most of it, which I feel like is a good thing. Those are general thoughts. Give me your general thoughts. Okay, first of all, it's great that you were able to understand it because uh, the the show as a whole had this somewhat insurmountable task of being a sequel to things that people love while at the same time being able to be watched by people like you who haven't mm-hmm. seen those other things. It's a very similar thing to like what Tears of the Kingdom had to do because they had to assume that you didn't play Breath of the Wild but then also recognize that there are a lot of people who did. Mm -hmm. So Ahsoka had this insurmountable task and I think accomplished it very well in the sense of you, everyone from a pretty base level understands that, you know, Ahsoka is Anakin's Padawan. Mm -hmm. The new Republic is established because the empire fell. There's people left. Like there are certain things that from other contexts of the other, like if you are a live action purist and that's all you've seen, you have some semblance of context, Mm -hmm. especially if you've seen like the Mandalorian, you know who Ahsoka is from a fundamental level Mm -hmm. because you've seen her in that one episode in season two. And then in that one episode of book of Boba Fett. So I think it's great that they were able to do both. Agreed. However, however, what I'm going to say, is I I really enjoyed it. Actually, that's a lie. I'm not going to be coy. <laughs> I liked it. It was enjoyable. Yeah. It is not, however, the greatest Star Wars ever created. It is not the best thing since sliced bread. I said this as we were talking before the right. episode. The reason people think this is the best Star Wars content is because Disney has been making such bad Star Wars content with with the exception of stuff like Andor mm-hmm. and the first season of Mando that because all the only thing we're used to is the bad content. Right. Anything that somewhat has some semblance of being good or any form of potential is seen as great because right. everything else in comparison is so bad. It's just elevated. Not to say yes. that Ahsoka is bad, because it's not. No. But it's being it's not elevated by comparison. There's definitely worse Star Wars shows we've gotten in oh, the wholeheartedly. recent years. Like Book of Boba Fett yeah. was pretty bad, 
But I will also Kenobi say... Kenobi was pretty bad, except for, like, some very specific parts. See, Kenobi, to me, is difficult because when I watched it, I enjoyed it. And I was like, this is really cool. But I also remember, like, one episode. I, I literally I could only not remember tell you. the last episode. I could not tell you what happened in that show. And a couple handful of his interactions with right. little Leia. That's right. it. I forgot she was in that show. And so it's just kind of like, while the show may not have been bad, it was just forgetful. And so it I... That is what I'll say about Ahsoka is... I remember I remember most of what happens in the show. Like I can look at the episodes and tell you what happened in the episode. Okay. Okay. That's because you watched it this week. <laughs> I don't think that's a fair comparison to hold against the other Star Wars shows. Well You watched okay. Ahsoka this week. That's that's fair. I'll also say, as someone this may be my disconnect to the animated shows or whatever this still isn't my favorite star wars show i think the first season of the mandalorian for me is gonna be really hard to beat um because they really they sh struck gold there but i know a lot of people that are like yeah ahsoka's my favorite star wars show and i think that's a very valid opinion uh, because if you have like a deep connection with the character then a very high quality, well written and well shot show about her, like you know, it's gonna be your favorite, and I understand whoa, that. Whoa, I think whoa, that's whoa, based. Whoa, 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 whoa! I wouldn't say it was well written. I disagree. Per I think se. it was very well written. It was well written in a fundamental sense. Sure, maybe. What do I'm you not mean okay. by that. <laughs> Maybe in a fundamental sense, was the writing good? Sure. There were certain aspects of it though that I don't think worked very well. Okay. Um so it was shot very well. I will give it that. It was gorgeous. I liked, comparatively to some other like even just shows in general, it seemed like they used a lot of practical stuff. Yes. For this show. Like you could tell there are certain scenes when they're standing out by the shuttle or they're standing on top of the shuttle like that. The whole space thing that I criticized, which we're going to go episode by episode. Yeah. But the whole space thing that I criticized a couple episodes ago didn't actually look that bad in the greater context of the episode. So I'd like to, I'd like to revoke that criticism, mm -hmm. um, which is something I'm going to, okay. Broadly speaking, this is Broadly a hard speaking. thing to do on the internet. I'd like to revoke my original criticism of Ahsoka mm. because I spoke out of having not seen the series and out and off of out of context clips on the internet, which is something you shouldn't do. And I should not have done it on the episode to begin with. This is character growth, <laughs> but I can, I can revoke those statements and admit that I was wrong. Right. Um, and I will try to not do that in the future Good. because it's something we as a, as a society should not right. do. And we as a brand don't want to enforce. <laughs> yes. There was a lot of stuff in the first four episodes. I mean, I watched the first episode and I was like, dang, maybe I judged you too harshly. The Thanos yeah. meme, perhaps I judged you too harshly. Like, yeah. this was actually really enjoyable, really cool. There was some stuff that like, I went into it trying to have an open mind and be like okay i'm not super looking forward to this yeah but i'm gonna be optimistic about it and then like the minute my mind switched was in the first episode when ahsoka like th force throws the lightsabers on the ground mm -hmm. and then drags them around in the circle and falls down yeah. like that was cool that was boss and at that point i was like all right, she's pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know. I can't. I can't say that was bad. That was pretty cool. Um, and that was another thing that they did practically. It would have been right. very easy to do. Like, all right, we're gonna slowly lower you across a green screen. Like, no, right. she. I mean, I'm sure there were cables and stuff attached. Right. But she fell. But that was Rosario <laughs> Dawson going down yeah. on an actual like physical platform. Yeah. So that that was that's one thing I will praise about it is they'd used a lot of practical stuff. The CGI didn't actually look that bad. It looked really good. I was like in what? a world where like 
And maybe that's just a Marvel thing because Marvel's vomiting so much stuff out that it looks yeah. bad. But the Star Wars CGI hasn't unionized. looked that bad. <laughs> yeah. Good for them. Good honestly. for them. They deserve um, it. Um, so but, yeah, it's yeah. Can it's I? It's one of those things where it's like it doesn't look bad. Go ahead. Right. Can I ask why you weren't looking forward to this? I feel like you there's there's there was no middle ground because if you're an Ahsoka fan, you were either like foaming at the mouth for an Ahsoka show or you were like lord have mercy please don't do an Ahsoka show like what puts you on that that side of the spectrum okay so there are two reasons I was not looking forward to this show Mm -hmm. one they announced this show after after like right after the Ahsoka episode of The Mandalorian. Yes. Which I remember I was really excited for that. I had heard the rumors of like Ahsoka is going to be in The Mandalorian. That's going to be really cool. And then I watched that episode and I was instantaneously turned off. Mm -hmm. I was like, it was cool, but this isn't exactly what I had in mind. Right. It's hashtag not my Ahsoka. I definitely shouldn't have stayed up till 3 a.m. for this (laughs) one. Um, And then right after that, they announced the show and I remember just being so viscerally upset because yeah. it was like, we're doing an Ahsoka show. It's a live action Ahsoka show on Disney plus. And I was like, I, if it was an animated show, I'd be like, cool, great. Mm-hmm. But I've been very like against it since the start because I didn't like the live action Ahsoka. Now I want to be very careful about how I say this. I'm not, any of my criticism of live action Ahsoka is not directed at Rosario Dawson as a person. I want to make that Mm -hmm. very clear. I'm not hating on her. I'm not saying that she shouldn't have work because Mm -hmm. she's a terrible actress. I think for the role she was given, she did a good job. Mm -hmm. Now, whether or not I like this take on the character and this interpretation of the character is completely different. I don't like this interpretation of the character because it's not what I grew up with. Yeah. It's it's very different mm-hmm. from what I grew up with. Uh, like, And it's a point I, I kind of want to bring up later is Ahsoka in this series feels very different from the Ahsoka that's in the Clone Wars and right. Rebels. One, because you're trying to justify to me that Rosario Dawson in a bunch of makeup is the same as Ashley Eckstein in a voice booth. They they are not the same. You're right. So it's kind of like, it's it's just a hard thing for me personally to grapple with. And being a fan of Ahsoka for so long, just to see like, this is how you want to go about it? Yeah. Is a live action show? My other reasoning was, as a writer, I'm a very big advocate of just letting characters be done. Yeah. Like, just letting them rest and letting them be done. And this doesn't feel like that. This feels like Ahsoka had an arc. She went through that arc in the Clone Wars and Rebels and then got to the end of that arc and is done. And then they kind of just dug her up because yeah. none of the female characters that they had made were really wildly popular and they wanted to like fulfill that f- like strong female character and they're like, "Well, we have Ahsoka. This is who the people like." It. Yeah. So, I think this show would be very different or wouldn't exist entirely if Rey took off or yeah. like Rose if she took was off like or any of those Ahsoka. characters. If she was yeah. like the new Ahsoka, I think I wonder if they would even give a flying flip about Ahsoka. Which is what they wanted her to be. If you look at the way The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi are set up, they really wanted Rey to be the next Ahsoka. Like this Jedi who's a really well-written, really great female character, great role model, and then they Mm kind of just screwed it all up in The Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. Because no one was like horribly against Rey. No one liked her, really. But no one was... I mean, some people liked her. Some there people liked that, her. I'll call them the radical side of the Star Wars fan base <laughs> who didn't like her. 
But those are also the same people who didn't like her because she was a woman. Right. So right. They're not, I, I'm no not going to say they're not real Star Wars fans. I'm just saying because that's gatekeeping. That's not we a valid gatekeep. reason to not like a character. Right. Like we don't because of their gender. Here. We can't say you're not a real fan because of this. That's not. That's not cool. But also, no one was like, no one was ever saying from the very beginning of The Force Awakens, Ray is such an S tier character. And granted, based on what I know, I feel like no one, no one really loved Ahsoka at first. But also, the difference is they had a Dave Filoni knew what he wanted to do with Ahsoka, and everyone they just kind of wanted um, strong female lead. Dot MP3, and threw um, Daisy Ridley into the fire on that one, and yes. so that's unfortunate. But. No. You're absolutely right. People did not like Ahsoka for the same reasons they didn't like Rey because she was a female. Like, mm -hmm. wh wh why is there a girl Jedi here? That's so yeah. lame. Anakin never had a Padawan. But I think to your point, the difference is Dave Filoni knew Filoni. Dave Filoni. Filoni, <laughs> Dave Filoni. <knew laughs> where Ahsoka's journey was going. Yeah. He knew where her character arc was going to end. He knew how that journey was going to be made. Mm -hmm. The sequel trilogy did not have that same no. framework <laughs> for Rey, which sucks because Daisy Ridley is an incredible actress. She did an yeah, incredible job great. with that role. Rey is a really good character. That was and written would have been so even horribly. better <laughs> if she was just written better, which I know they're doing like Yeah, they're trying. A Rey show and I'm Really curious to see how much they're course correcting because it feels like with the whole Dave Filoni Mandoverse, mm -hmm. they're trying to course correct the sequels, and it makes me feel like they're getting to a point where they're gonna like have to acknowledge that the sequels exist, but then like kind of yeah. pretend that they don't and just be like, oh, and now Ray is restarting the Jedi Order with Finn, and like that's yeah the, the whole thing. They're like. Okay, but also, I was all Rise of Skywalker. That movie was booty cheeks. Like, yeah, no uh, one... we, guys, this was a yeah. bad movie. And I think, I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like, now, I, this is what's hard. This is why this is an interesting conversation, because I don't know Ahsoka. But I feel like, even watching Ahsoka, Dave Filoni knows what he's doing. Whether or not... Whether or not people agree with what he's doing or like with what he's doing, he ultimately is in control and knows what he's doing and is making what I think is good decisions for the character. I also know that Dave Filoni originally wanted to do a live action series and just straight up didn't have the budget and was like, screw it, we're going animated. And so I feel like this... This is Dave Filoni kind of showing his potential. And I feel like, let's see, I trust in Dave Filoni. Hashtag, I trust in Dave Filoni. And I feel like he needs to just take over Star Wars at this point. Like, I, I feel like he, I trust that he has a plan. And even if it's not what people agree with, I think he knows what he's doing. Um, and I saw that in the first the first two episodes, even though it was mainly like dialogue, I was pretty engaged and I was like picking up on little character stuff. Um, you know, I'd be like, OK, here's Sabine. I know she's from I know she's from Rebels and whatever. And they're picking up on this little stuff. And I'm like, oh, OK, she's a Mandalorian, I guess. But she's also like was Ahsoka's Padawan and she like gave up on her or something. I don't, those are, those, those are the dots that I'm struggling to connect is like, there's obviously a lot of lore there that I just have a base level of. So I'm back. Welcome Hello. back. Um, Sabine being Ahsoka's Padawan is a completely new thing that oh. they brought in this show. It was never brought up, never mentioned in Rebels at all. Spoiler for the end of Rebels, the very end, which we have already given you your spoil warning. And if you've watched, if you've, anyway. Anywho. <laughs> in the epilogue, we see Ahsoka 
like that scene where Sabine is at the mural and Ahsoka is standing there and like they go in the ship. That is the epilogue scene of Rebels. So oh. Ahsoka introduces like this little bit of new content in episode one and two. And then the very end of episode two is where Rebels left off. Oh. But it was never in imp- imp- the blah, blah. It was never implied. implied or inferred that Sabine was Ahsoka's Padawan, which you find out later in the series that the reason Sabine was training was because of the Purge of Mandalore, which at the time of Rebels coming out was not a thing. Mm. That That's an entirely new thing that was introduced with the Mandalorian. Okay. Which now I kind of want Sabine and like Din Djarin to right. meet. Like, cause they're Mandalorians and like, it'd be great if Bo-Katan could see Sabine again because like they had some interactions in Rebels yeah. and stuff. And obviously... Bo-Katan and Ahsoka are very close because they had that thing in um, the Clone Wars. So, yeah, that was a new thing Okay, that they brought in, which I thought was very interesting because they had already kind of done the Ahsoka had a Padawan thing because Ahsoka did a lot of training with Ezra yeah. in Rebels. And I felt like that sufficiently filled that role yeah and this is where i get into the kind of somewhat shoddy writing for ahsoka herself yeah because it feels like they kind of had to undo a little bit of her character and make her her something to learn yeah like they had to make her slightly more impulsive and slightly more of a worse person so that they could develop her in this series. Because at the end of Rebels, she's a very, like, this very wise character who there are certain decisions that she wouldn't have made mm-hmm. based on the animated aspect of that character. So that that felt weird and is what con- helped contribute to the whole, like, oh, these don't feel like the same right. character. That makes sense. And I felt like... I, I kind of liked the, the wise Ahsoka vibe. I thought she was very like, she was very like, oh, well, this. And you're like, ooh, bars. But also, you could also tell she's kind of like cold, you know? She's kind of like hard and gritty and christened. And like, she obviously has like war trauma and like, you know. Which, which is weird because I... Maybe I'm misremembering things, but she was never like that in Rebels. I really don't know. <laughs> and I'm I'm using Rebels as the as the primary example because there was a lot of development in Rebels that filled the gap between where this show is at and where the mm-hmm. Clone Wars is. So making the jump from Clone Wars to Ahsoka is not as fair to the character right. because you'd be ignoring everything that happened in Rebels. So that's why I'm using it as the primary comparison. Mm-hmm. But even in Rebels, she still had that like somewhat upbeat type it's kind of hopeful yeah kind of hopeful character she was wise and definitely learned things in that show but never felt too cold whereas in this show it feels like something happened that we don't know happened and now she's like this really cold jaded person yeah and i and i think what people will tell you is it's, oh, Sabine was her Padawan, and then they like had a falling out, and that's what made her a cold, hard, jaded person. It's like, okay, that doesn't feel like enough to move the needle that mm-hmm. far, though. Like, this is like someone close to her died. Right. Or like... She did something wrong. I don't know. Or, you know... Do, would you do you, would you go as far to say that she was like Luke skywalker in the sense that like he became like an old hermit yes but not as egregious because with the thing with luke is like we have the context the full context of what happened and made him that way Mm -hmm. we don't have the full context we know and maybe we'll know at some point you know based on mando season two ahsoka was out looking for thrawn yeah so that episode takes place before the show which takes place before her interaction with Luke. Like, I'm pretty sure it's, like, season Mando season two, b- 
Book of Boba Fett, then the live action show. Obviously, because there's no break in the live action show where she would go do either of those things. Right. So it's kind of like, what happened? Like what happened? <laughs> what What turned you into this jaded person that you mm-hmm. are like so mean and cold? Yeah. That's interesting. Which she also learns through the show, and like that's what uh, that's what her droid says. Is she's like, he's like, hey, there's not gonna be a tomorrow if you keep acting this way. And I thought that was really interesting. Of there's like a, a switch that flipped where she was like, oh, you're right. I'm being kind of arrogant, and like switched and more became more of a team with Sabine. Um, which is what I think that's in episode three, if I'm not mistaken. So moving a little bit further into the show, um, there are some characters in the show that I have a couple problems with. I don't like the mercenaries. Uh, Ooh, like the take. guy the guy and the, the like, uh, okay, saying I don't like them is a little strong. God because bless it, Shin Hadi. She is so hot. Anyway. <laughs> Oh. I can fix her. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, also, I'm going to shout this out. Long hair Sabine, way better than short hair Sabine. I, don't, I will die on this hill. I, I know everyone's like, the long hair doesn't fit in the Mandalorian helmet. And I'm like, okay, it's called putting your hair up. <laughs> like, bro. I don't think it's you not can that say deep. that. <laughs> I, it's not, no, I can say that because there are other Mandalorians with long hair who put their hair up and it fits in the helmet. Yeah. So it's not yeah, like it's right. never been done before. Yeah. I I will I think the long long hair suits are better. But the the mercenaries, it's not fair to say that I don't like them because I didn't not enjoy them. I just I don't know if I'm missing context or what, but I couldn't figure out why they were there. Like I feel like there was enough bad guys in this show without them. I'm trying to figure out why they were there. Like, was there a story there. reason I missed for them being there? I don't know. I can tell you why they were there. They were there so that Ahsoka and Sabine had someone to cross lightsabers with. Yeah. That's it. They needed the lightsaber yeah. on lightsaber combat. And I mean, I think the justification for them being there of like, oh, we want to help rebuild the empire so we can have power, blah, 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 blah. Like, right. I think that was fine. That's valid. Yeah. You, like, it, it was fine. awful, but it could have been better. And I felt, I felt weird because they were obviously like giving the girl like a character arc where like she's kind of conflicted and she like obviously doesn't want to be like part of this war and like is wondering if she believes in the empire and i liked that but i i think i think that it just it, i might not like it now i think it just needs more time to develop and hopefully i don't know if they've said this is getting a season two or if it's continuing another show but i think I just think they need more time to get there. And this was only an eight episode show saying, saying that as if eight, like this essentially like four hours. Um, but you know, there was a lot going on and so they didn't necessarily have time to dive super deep into them. And so I think they have big potential, but I just didn't fully understand them this time around. I think that's so... fair. I mean, there was the one, there was the one mercenary guy who wasn't even like real. Right, he was just <laughs> Alphonse Elric for those yeah. who get the joke. Um, with a lightsaber, like he was just a, a, a empty husk inside of a thing, which was like the first introduction of the the Dathomir witch magic. Yes, because we knew that like Morgan, I don't even remember her last name, but like Morgan. We knew she was dabbling in the Dathomir Witch, which is a great thing that they brought back. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really like the... Which, this isn't even an Ahsoka thing. This is just like a Clone Wars slash lore type thing. I like that there is other aspects of the Force. Where... Mm-hmm. Which yeah. is... it's It kind of like parallels the real world, depending on how you want to look at it. Is like there is this... What if we took this normal thing in the force and then added like this dark perversion onto it 
and it did all of these weird things like right. zombies and Dude. inanimate armor now can fully wield a lightsaber. Like all of these different things. I think it's great that that's there. And okay. We've glossed over this for a while. And I wrote, yeah. wrote this, this down in, in my notes. There's a whole other galaxy yeah. out there. Bro. And it's just now been brought up. Yeah, I'm so glad. What? Yeah, this is crazy. Also, it really makes you think, because that episode, episode six, was titled yes. a gal or far, far away. Yeah, which is like, so is the Star Wars that we've seen stories that have jumped to the other galaxy and are being told from that perspective right. of like a long time ago. In the galaxy that is far, far away from here, right? This is what happened, which is crazy. Because and we've kind of, always like the kind of meta thing was like, oh, that's us because our real life mm -hmm. galaxy is in the future from what Star Wars is in a completely right. different galaxy. So I don't know. It, it probably I has no cool. significance whatsoever. Right, but it's kind of cool to think about. It is really cool, and I, I really, I thought that was a really good idea, um, because, you know, we've talked about this before about how Star Wars has so much deep lore and a lot of incredible characters, but Disney doesn't want to expand on that. They really want to keep it within Skywalker and like that, like the that family and their close friends, and so. And I understand because the last time they tried to expand out of that, it didn't work. And they were like, JK, Ray is a Skywalker. See, don't you love this now? And we're like, no, stop, please. But I think that this was maybe one of the best ways that you could keep your characters and do, do the characters everybody loves, but also make it fresh because we're in a completely new place we know nothing about. And it added so much stakes to the last episode because you're like, all right, if we don't get on this ship, like we're done. Like we are stuck here. Thrawn gets out and all this stuff. I thought that was a great decision to do a whole nother galaxy. Love that. Also, I don't know. I don't know if this is a hot, a hot take or not. I think episode four might be my favorite episode okay i was about to get there i was like there's two episodes that i really yeah, want to talk really about in talk depth about. and it's four and five four is so freaking good i think four is by far the best episode in the entire show it's hard because i really like episode eight which we'll get into in a minute but especially from the perspective of someone who doesn't have full context episode four really stuck with me Yeah, it, I really liked episode four because everything, like I'm looking at my notes here, mm -hmm. still mad that Sabine cut her hair. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> um, Hugh Yang can fight. That's poggers. Um, I'm, I'm legitimately I reading really off love, my notes. I really I, love your notes. <laughs> I, okay, so for those who don't know, I write these notes as I'm watching. So, like, I have the notes document open on my phone. I'm going to do the same for Loki. This is how I remember what happened right. in the episode. Um, I literally would be like, oh, yo, that Hugh, man, that Hugh Yang fight was pretty dope. You and then I move, it like, like go that. back to exactly. watching the episode. <laughs> which, that is another thing I liked. Hugh Yang was very practical, mm -hmm. which felt like they were moving back to the old, like, all the droids were practical and not CGI. That was really cool. Really love Hugh Yang as a character. Because um, he was an actual character. He wasn't just this weird droid that was there to help. You actually like started to feel for him like invested. he was real. Yeah. Right. Um, the duel duel was really well choreographed. Yes. Where it was it was Ahsoka versus the weird like night sister armor guy and then Ahsoka or not Ahsoka, uh Sabine versus Shin. And the whole way, like they were going back and forth. Another thing I really loved, and this came out more in the Ahsoka versus Balin fight, 
is they really leaned into the samurai aesthetic yes. of Ahsoka. Because I know they went that way outfit-wise. If you look at her outfit, she is very much like that more traditional samurai-type outfit. But even down to like the music, the choreography, they leaned into it so much, and it was so cool. Yep. Because it felt like it had stakes. It wasn't like... I'll say the the sequel trilogy fights where it's kind of like, bam, 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 we're, we're, we're swinging sticks yeah. back and forth. This felt like the lightsabers actually had weight. Yes. And if you messed up, there was a negative consequence of that. And like, just the way... Oh, man. So good. So good. So, so good. good. And I really... I got I got invested. This is when it clicked that I was invested because I watched the first three episodes and we're like, this is good. But then the fourth one, I was like, I'm in. I'm locked in. I'm invested. Huge cliffhanger at the end. I really love the way that you also see shots of Hera and how she's trying to like get this mission approved. And they're just like, sorry, like, no. Um, but she goes anyway, and I really one of my favorite lines that he, they say in the show is she says, "I really, it's like I need you to stop acting like this is still a rebellion." And I was just like, "Oh, that goes hard, like my man." Dang. And so, and then like I also really liked the plot of the government not really being on their side. I thought that was really, really interesting. Can we talk about the New Republic for a second, dude? This series did, made me feel glad that Starkiller Base wiped out the New Republic. No, for real. <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm not a fan of, like, mass genocide. That's bad. Right. But I kind of was like, you know what? The New Republic does need to go. Right. Like, they they're not any better than the Empire. They did some stupid stuff. They did some stupid stuff. It was stuff. really dumb. Like, in the first two episodes, Hera's like, hey, we found a bunch of Imperial remnants, um building this giant massive hyperspace ring um and they're trying to go like bring back grand admiral thrawn and everyone's like hera he's long you're gone. insane girl you're he's crazy gone. He's, <laughs> he's dead girl imperial remnants those don't exist we we've taken all the imperial remnants under our wing and they work for us now and then Hera's like, yeah, because long live the Empire sounds like a great call sign for yeah. New Republic people. And that persists later on, yep. which this is also what frustrated me on Hera's part is like after the ring jumps, right? Yeah. Which was a really cool sequence. Phenomenal. Where like the Phenomenal. ring jumps and then it shoots or no, the first time it goes off, it sh it jumps up, like through them. Yeah. And they go through the ring. It was so cool. So cool. And like all their ships get hit and stuff. And I'm like, okay. And then Hera's talking to the people and they're like, do you have any evidence? And she's like, uh, um, uh, Ooh. and I'm like, Hera, two people who are with you died because the thing jumped across you and crashed their ships together. Yeah. Also, there was the guy from the Mandalorian who's an X-Wing pilot. Who didn't say anything? Yep. We watched the ring. We watched the ring jump. How is that not brought up? That is such yeah. a crucial detail that never got brought up. Is that the ring jumped? Yeah. And the New Republic's like, huh? They're like, doesn't oh, happen. No. I really, I really hope. I know this is not what's going to happen. But in episode seven, and we'll kind of go back to four and five because right. I do want to talk about those. Episode seven. That one guy in the courtroom who was like, uh, Hera, you're a little insane. You're, you're a crazy. crazy. A little stupid. <laughs> um, you're acting Imperial like a real remnants? silly goose right now. No such thing. I, that guy was so annoying. Yeah. And so hateable. Because even when 3PO comes in and is like, hey, we have new evidence from Leia, by the way. Um, he was like, whoa, we can't present any new evidence because it would dismantle my point. And yeah. like, we'd have to have a different ruling. I really hope that guy turns out to be a new, like a uh, imperial remnant yep. who has made it this far up in the ranks because it would justify and make sense as to because he was really the only one who was pushing the whole you're a little dumb, little silly, a little stupid, very dismissive. Yeah. Everyone else was kind of like, uh, 
Uh, like, I don't know. He's making some really good points. Yeah. Like, so I really hope they do something with him and we find out later that he's like this high ranking Imperial officer who's now (laughs) like, even from the rebellion, been this double agent and has now like infiltrated the high court of the new Republic. Like, I just think that would be really cool. I know that's not what's going to happen because he's a minor character. And he will be forgotten about and probably never brought up again. Yeah, but I, I don't would know. love we've, if that we've was predicted true. stuff like that before. But um, all right, we need to get into the big cheese of the Biggie Ahsoka. Cheese. This is this is like where things are going to get controversial. This is where the, we flip. This is where the show kind of takes a different turn. Um, episode five. Spoilers, sucked. duh. Sucked. I. It was awful. I. Think well, okay, that's really that's really strong. That's intense. That's too strong. I. Here's here's the thing. Everyone I talk to, is like, oh my gosh, this is insane, and they're so into it and they love it so much, and I just don't have a connection, and I'm sorry. Like episode five was v- cool. I thought it was really cool, and I liked seeing the clone troopers. And I thought going into young Ahsoka and having Aiden Christensen back. Um, Hayden. Hayden. Sorry, it's too late. You say it's Aiden too late for every this. time. Um, having Hayden Christensen back was cool. I thought it was super cool, but I was also kind of like, is this your? Is this your cheap, like, hey, remember when we did the Clone Wars moment? You know? I was almost like, I'm also, I'm sorry if I'm missing context, but I don't, I don't understand what happened. Did she go into some, like, other realm? Has this happened before? I don't get it. What was in the water? I don't know. That was some weird water. Is this, Um, was this like a force thing? Like, do you know what okay. happened, or is this... So, I do know what happened. Okay. How it connects to the water, I'm not entirely sure. But when she's... The the main area where she's at with Anakin, yeah, where it's got, like, all the different paths, and it looks like they're in space, that, according to Dave Filoni, is the physical manifestation of, like, where the Force converges. Because okay. that, that realm is the only reason Ahsoka is still alive. Right. Because in Rebels, she dies. Right. Because she fights Vader and dies. But it's later found out that Ezra went into this weird place. Yeah. And that place transcends space and time. Okay. So when Ezra's there, you hear like clips from the sequels, clips from the prequels, clips from the Clone Wars. Like you hear all of these different sound bites and stuff when he's in there and he goes to see the Ahsoka fight and pulls her through this mirror, which keeps her from dying. Oh. And protects her from this like temple crumbling in. And then she goes back through and um survives. So that's how she's alive. She okay. should be dead. Right. It's really weird, like, timey-wimey time travel stuff. Okay. <laughs> it's all a manifestation of the Force, though. I think so that's I'm following. How, <laughs> that's, don't worry about it. It's a manifestation of the Force. Okay. And it kind of makes sense. Okay. Um, I think that makes sense. I just... That is all you really need to know. I, I thought it was really cool. And I thought it, it, it did some good character work for her. But I also don't know, and I'm sorry, I don't know if this is a hot take. I don't know if it was necessary. I don't know. I don't know if it was. Here's my here's my biggest gripe is Rosario Dawson's a great actor. They did not give her any of the emotional acting. No, they didn't. Because all of Ahsoka's emotional, like, confused acting came from young Ahsoka. The and girl. I was like, ah. Oh. Bro, give that to yeah. Rosario Dawson. Let her do something. Yeah. Let her cook. Other than be this <laughs> stoic character. Yeah. Another thing, and here's why I didn't like the Clone Wars flashback. I thought like the stuff between Ahsoka and Anakin, absolutely great. I loved that. Right. 
as soon as I got to the Clone Wars flashback, though, I was really turned off because, like I said earlier, the jump from Ashley Eckstein to Rosario Dawson is already jarring enough. Right. But now, because at least with that jump, you have the plausible, like, oh, well, it's a, like it's an older version of Ahsoka set in the future that Ashley hasn't done yet. Whereas with this, they were actively going back to things that Ashley had done and p- using a different actor to convey a, a scene that we've already seen before. Right. And that was hard for me because now I'm having to go two layers deep and it's just so hard for me to suspend that disbelief. That makes sense because it's not even just, oh, it's per- suspending your disbelief of it being the same character but it's you're also trying to it's trying to get you to actively overwrite what you already know in this scene of no this this is the same character you're like no but this is supposed to be animated um which you can have your opinions on i i'm kind of in this weird middle ground of like you know they did it i don't think it was bad but i also don't I don't know if it was like wholly necessary. I I also didn't love the way the Clone Wars outfit looked on Hayden at all. He I he's thought different it was now. really ugly. He's different now. Because that outfit with like the shoulder pads right. and like the armor and stuff really only looks good in live action. Yeah. Costumes like physical costumes, even the Halloween costumes and stuff never looked good. It only worked because of the art style. Oh, you mean in an animation? And the way they did it in the animated show. Yeah. You said live yeah, action. Yeah, it looks great in animation, but I don't like the way it looks in live action. I okay. think it looks ugly I, and gross. It, you know, Aiden, Hayden Christensen, I think he did a good job, um, but also at what point do we let him rest? Like just let him, leave that just alone. let him. they really wanted to put him through like his redemption arc. They yeah. Like, oh, you guys like Hayden Christensen now? All right, we'll put him in every single project. Which you know now that you actually he, like him, he did a great job. And I think, and we'll get into the last episode in a little bit. But I think the last episode of him, his Force Ghost being there, had a bigger impact on me, and I felt more from that like three second scene than episode five in its entirety. Um, because I felt like what had happened in episode five, because it was in this weird dimension, wasn't real. I felt like she was just kind of like imagining this and like recalling stuff where in episode eight, I was like, he's there, he's watching her. It's real. And so even though I know episode five, like that was real, it just didn't, it didn't connect as well. You know, does that make sense? Right. Yeah. Um, I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention we got live action Captain Rex, which that I can give a pass. That's kind of a W. Because it's a guy in a helmet. Right. I'll take that. I'll take that all right. freaking day. We've been that looking at so troopers cool. for like ever. Like we can look at troopers. I get it. <laughs> yeah, we There's get it. certain stuff that I'm like, right. whatever. Right. That was really cool. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I just didn't. Uh, can I, I ask? Know. Can I ask what you think of the Thrawn look? Oh, I love Thrawn. I think he looks great. I mean, there's certain there's certain things that look different. Right. But I also, it's kind of like the, with Thrawn, I get in the same predicament as like Count Dooku. Have you seen what Dooku looks like in the Clone Wars? Yeah. Where he's got like <laughs> that really skinny head and the really vertical yeah. uh, beard, but he doesn't look like that in the movies. I can, I can like, with Thrawn... He doesn't have that chiseled, like, chin that he has in Rebels. Right. His hair is not, like, completely perfect. But I can also justify that because he's been stranded in this other galaxy for, like, 15 years. Yeah. So it would make sense if his facial structure had changed a little bit, even if he got, like, a little chubbier or whatever, just because he hasn't, you know, had access right. to normal food or water. Um so you know, like that, I can give a pass. You're just like, I do whatever. Think it's he great. looks different. <laughs> Here's what I loved about Thrawn, though, is they took the time to get the voice actor in the makeup and did it. The guy who plays Thrawn, that's his voice actor from the show. 
So he really? sounds exactly the same. When I because I wasn't expecting them to do that. When I heard who they cast, I was like, "Oh, that name sounds familiar." I thought it was the guy who was the bad guy in Indiana Jones. You know who I'm talking oh, about? Oh yeah, the new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In I thought it was him. I was like, "Oh, I do know who you're talking." I mean, about. I guess that's a fine, fine cast choice. And then I heard him talk, and I'm like, "He sounds." just like Thrawn. Wow, they did just a really like good Thrawn. job. And then I Googled it and I was like, oh, that's him. Because he is Thrawn. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. I'll take nice. it. Yeah. That's great. Um, unless you have anything else to say about episode five, I'd like to say oh, I think episode six is probably my least favorite episode of the show. I have one more thing to say. Okay. Only because it's a note that I specifically wrote down. <laughs> Post okay. watching this episode, I'm going to personally hunt down everyone who said we should get a live action Clone Wars movie slash series. Um, yeah. I'd like to reiterate that that point still stands. Um, that's a bad idea. <laughs> don't, don't come at me with your live action takes, okay? Clone, War- I'm not gonna become like one of those animation purists. I'm gonna try not to. Because then I just become the same as the live action purist. But right, the Clone Wars is a fantastic animated show. It truly is one of the best right. animated shows ever made. Let's leave it that way. We like, let's leave those characters. Mm-hmm. Let's leave that show as the masterpiece it is. It does not need to come to live action just because there are people that won't watch it because it's animated. I understand it's right. a travesty that those people will not ever experienced that show because they can't get over the hurdle of animation but you're ultimately going to hurt your brand the story you've already told and the characters if you turn it into live action to please those just those few extra people who want the live action version that's what i have to say about it which is a much more yeah. calm take than the last <laughs> time i had this conversation the last time we talked about this there was there was some yelling but I, I respect I respect your calm take. I, I feel like you're just doing a disservice to animation and just pushing animation further back in time by saying, well, if you don't want to watch it because it's animated, fine. We'll spend $100 million to make it live action for you. Here you go, sweetie. And it's just like, no, if they don't want to watch it because it's animated, then they don't get to watch it. Like, and I, I have not seen Clone Wars, but it's not because it's animated. I just, it wasn't. I didn't have cable when it was running, and so like we, Oof, we just didn't. I just, it wasn't Imagine on my. Not having cable. It wasn't on my radar until like two years ago, and everyone was like, "What do you mean you haven't seen Clone Wars?" I was like, "I just haven't. Like, I just haven't gotten to it." They're like, are you insane? So, that being said, episode six is probably my least favorite. I don't think it was bad. I just thought it was boring. I I couldn't tell you what happened in it. I'm sorry. Like, I I don't know what happened. I gotta tell you about this note. Oh, gosh. What'd you say? Dude, some of my notes are so (laughs) funny. Okay. (laughs) I wrote down... So we can use Thrawn's voice actor as his live action actor, but not Ahsoka. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Legitimately a note I wrote. Does Ashley Stein do live action acting? No. I didn't think so. <laughs> no. I didn't think uh, so. I don't I, I mean she's probably had a live action role here or there. Right. But it's not like she's mainly a voice actress. Right. That makes before sense. Before anything else. So it was it was kind of like a I'm not I'm not serious. Right. It's one of those things um, That's really that I funny. wrote down as a joke. That's funny. I, I see. Okay, I see what you mean about episode six being kind of boring. Yeah, because it is. It is pretty boring. I don't remember what happened. Um, I don't know. Uh, based on my notes, let's see, because I don't remember what happened either. Um, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, could the Star Wars universe be a story in the past told from another galaxy perspective? Shin Hadi, more like Shin Hadi. At least Balin is a man of his word. Whoa, that's a big Star Destroyer. So we can use Thrawn's VA as his live-action actor, but not Ahsoka. Mm-hmm. Okay. JK, I'm not mad. This guy plays the character well. 
Okay, these guys are bad, but honorable since they gave Sabine her weapons and let her go without an issue. Thank God Sabine started using the lightsaber. A planet of hermit crabs. Ezra! And that was it. <laughs> oh, yes. This is when she... When she Finds pulls Ezra up Bridger. to the to the frog planet where they have the shells frog, and stuff. Kerm, hermit crabs, Jackson. They're not frogs. We know what frogs in Star Wars look like. Oh, you're right. Frog lady. We've already done McQueen. frogs. Sorry. Um, Gosh, here we go. <sighs> sorry. I'm a simp for frog lady. That's my bad. I, I, um, this is the one thing I do like about Thrawn. Thrawn genuinely may be one of the best Star Wars villains we've ever gotten. And I know you've only gotten like a little taste yeah. from 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 this, right? Take what he did in, in this and amp it up by like five, and that's what he did in Rebels. Oh, cool. Because in Rebels, the first two seasons is like the Empire is very incompetent and doesn't know what they're doing with this rebellion. Thrawn shows up, the Rebels start taking L's like crazy. Dang. Like, he starts handing them L's like it's candy <laughs> on Halloween. And it, it, it he's just... So well written, so analytical. Like you see, he was like, "I want to know everything about Ahsoka Tano right, right, right now." He and seemed like, very. Um, he was okay. very scary, and he was scary in the sense of I felt like he was one of the more realistic war generals I have seen in a Star Wars show. Yeah, and he was actually like, he was actually smart in his plays, and he wasn't just go kill them. He was like okay do this and they're like why that's a bad idea and he's like well because of it'll actually do this and they're like oh man is playing chess not chess. right he is doing like 3d chess over here and they're just not so yeah i yeah, i liked I like thrawn him. in it and i really liked the hermit crabs um do you do you have like a deep connection to ezra or are you just kind of like woohoo he's there cool in the sense of, I really liked him in Rebels, and I think he's like a top five, top ten, not top five, almost. I think he's probably like six or seven on my list of top ten Star Wars characters. Yeah. Um, I really like his arc and emotional journey in Rebels. Okay. I'm not a huge fan of the actor they chose to play him. Like, I, I think he plays the character very well. I just think visually. Yeah. He's not as Ezra as he could have been. Also, that yeah. man's eyes were blue. Yeah. Oh my gosh. He had I was going to say that. <laughs> I was like, dude, not like they put fake contacts or digitally enhanced his <laughs> eyes. You do not get eyes that blue Bro. naturally. Uh, Which I mean, he had blue eyes in Rebels, but I guess they just, just it like, wasn't that Phew. pronounced because yeah. it's animated. Right. Whereas this felt like that his eyes were kind of fake. Right. Like they were supposed to have like some kind of superpower <laughs> or something. That's funny. Um, I think it's great that he's back. One thing I do want to point out, and this was in episode eight. Okay. Is Ezra's new lightsaber is actually, I don't know if it's specifically built the same way, but it is very similar to Kanan's lightsaber, which was his master. Okay. Um, and which is why he was looking for that specific yeah. uh, top piece. Okay. Or the emitter was because that was Kanan's emitter. And okay. he has Kanan's lightsaber. And now Sabine has Ezra's lightsaber. Um, so Ezra also had the coolest lightsaber in Rebels <laughs> because it was a lightsaber, but it also had a gun on it. So it was like a two and one. The heck? It was really That's cool. Crazy. And they've never done that concept again. <laughs> and I was like, man. Oh, underutilized man. concept there so seven and eight kind of go together i feel like they're just like a continuous um thing i thought i thought seven and eight went so hard i was very engaged to these episodes um the like political drama intercut with the actual like the physical war um them r running under the star destroyer when it was shooting straight down that went hard. The hermit crabs, so fun. Um, episode eight, specifically. Oh wait, can I mention one note? Yeah, episode seven. I'm kind of talking about this them. This is in another. I'm talking about them in. This tandem, is a funny so. note. So Ahsoka jumps out of the shuttle, right? Right. As soon as I saw that, I wrote Ahsoka about to drop in, just like in Fortnite. <laughs> Which is so funny because she's Where in Fortnite dropping, now boys? this season. And I thought it was funny. She was like, all right, 
Hugh Yang, I'm going to jump. And he's like, uh, okay. Uh, okay. And now you can yeah. play as ah- Ahsoka in Fortnite. Also, do you, what episode what episode is it where she like steps outside of the ship and like distracts them? There's an episode that- where she does that. Three? It might be three. When it's she's earlier. In space? It's earlier on. Yeah. And like uses her lightsabers to yeah, cut up to the start the ships. Yes. Yeah. That was That's episode boss three. one. But also two, I thought it was so funny and kind of, I just, just kind of hilarious. Like she had a special like space helmet that like fit her head. Yeah. And it was, Cause she's it was got a good those look. special like. Yeah. For her. Hair. Hair, sure. They're called. Oh. Uh, what are they called? They're called Leku, I think. Fake fan. Interesting. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, uh, seven and eight. Since they're kind of continuous, I'll talk about them in tandem. But like, I I was engaged. It went hard, and I think episode eight, I really liked because it got it went really deep into like we were talking about earlier like the the sisters and their uh like the magic and the like the darker side of the force and we did some really some really intense force work in this show the last like two or three episodes that were like i feel like we haven't gotten anywhere else and we like also did they, some really weird witch stuff yeah like that was some that real was weird wacky. cult stuff. That was wacky. I was kind of into it though. I was like, "This is crazy. This and is f- weird." Also, and then she Ezra, dies like twenty minutes later. Right, and I was like, "Bro, Ezra, like not even wanting a weapon. He's like, the force is my weapon." And then literally just use. I was like, John Wick over here. Like, this is crazy. Do, I mean, hey, listen. If you've been stranded on this planet for like fifteen <sighs> years, no lightsaber. You're gonna get good at the force. Let would me you, tell you. Would you not get a little good? That's what I'm saying. You know you what I'm saying? Know? That's pretty good. That's good. I also think like the the final battle of episode eight hit for me. Which specifically. one specifically? Uh, the one where they like zombie overall? stormtroopers. Yeah, overall, like zombie stormtrooper battle, like in the temple, bro. That felt like it was straight out of a Battlefront two game. Like right? it, that was so fun. When can we get Battlefront Three with a zombie stormtrooper mode? It's never gonna happen. Like that would be phenomenal, absolutely insane. Can I read off my notes for episode eight? Yes. I think I need to start doing this for episodes because some of these are really funny. <laughs> um. Okay, so episode eight, not the Narnia reference in the title. The, no, right. Jedi, the, the Jedi, Witch, and the, the Witch, and the Warlord. That um, was so good. I was like, C.S. Lewis, you did it. <laughs> I said, look at all these witches, bro. <laughs> that was crazy. Dang. There's a little out of pocket. Uh, new new Ezra Saber that mirrors Kanan's. Thrawn knows exactly who she is. Zombie troopers, that's cool. These death troopers built different. Stormtroopers yeah. really said, I, I'm going to just watch. <laughs> Which is really funny because Ahsoka, like, they were blasting coming up the stairs. Yeah. And then Ahsoka and Morgan are really getting into it. And then they just stop. There's like, and they're just, watch. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. Oh, gosh. Um, also, the Death Troopers were really cool because I was like, so oh, good. dude, Death Troopers are so easy. Good. And then, like, Sabine shot up the mask and he was like, okay, moving on. And I like, right. just kept and going. Like, I was like, oh. Dude, it felt like um like the the Battlefront survival game mode on the Shadow Troopers on like Master and they like go invisible and you would just be like shooting them like so you just be laying into these troopers and they're just still alive. And you're like, "Bro, I can't do this anymore." So um, freaking good. I also have double slice oof she dead. <laughs> so they're just stuck here now. Ezra is actually home now. Thrawn calls up his buddies and jumps in VC. Hayden <laughs> Christensen got his paycheck. Uh, I love that Thrawn calls up his buddies because it's like he's back in uh, he's back right. in range now. He's like, all right, he's guys, like, what did I miss? <laughs> Where right, guys, are we dropping, boys? What's I, the play? What's the move? I'm also going to say this is the first time in like mainstream Star Wars where we've gotten a building lightsaber scene. And I think that that was really cool. Wait. Right? 
No, surely you're not right. Where do else? You, uh, wait, do you include the shows as mainline Star Wars? Do they do that in the show? Yeah. They do a lot of building in the shows. Was this the first live action, though? Hold on, I'm really trying to rack my brain here. I feel like this has to be the first, like, non-animated building lightsaber scene. Because there was a scene in, I think, um, gosh, what the frick, what's it called? The, um, it's not in Return of the Jedi. Empire Strikes Back, there was a scene where he built, Luke built a lightsaber and it was a cut. I'm really trying to think. I feel like this is in episode the, one, this is it. everyone has their lightsabers. Episode two, Anakin has his own lightsaber. He loses it, but gets a different one at the end of the movie. And But he doesn't build one. Episode three, he's has his like iconic one. Yeah. And then episode four, Luke inherits that lightsaber. Obi-Wan still has his. Vader still has his. Episode five, Luke still has his. Vader still has his. Um, Luke loses his at the end of the movie, but then by episode six, we know he's built a new one because it's green now, but we never see him build it. Episode seven, Ray inherits the the Skywalker's neighbor. Yeah, never builds one. Kylo Ren already has his. Same persists for episode eight, and then by episode nine, the. The Skywalker saber is fixed. We don't see them fix it, but, but it's, it's fixed. fixed. Yeah. Wow. This is the first live we went action this scene. This long? Yeah. This is the first live action scene where we've seen a lightsaber being built, and I thought that was phenomenal. That was such a good scene. That's so crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was really really cool. I was glad they. Uh, I was glad they added that, but. We also kind of we kind of end on a on a cliffhanger. Like, do you think this will get a second season, or do you think we're gonna finish this all up in a movie? Like, do we do another show? Like, what's where do we go from here? Because okay. like it ends and they're like stuck there, but Thrawn is out, and you know, what's the move? So, I don't. I genuinely don't know. Because I yeah. know Mando season four got converted into a movie. Yeah. Which is like how... It's an interesting Because ah Ahsoka and Sabine aren't there. The only way they could get back is if the space whales come back for them or someone... I think my camera died. <laughs> Uh-oh. That's very awkward. Anyway. Anywho. <laughs> I know Mando season four got turned into a movie. Um, but it may it really makes me wonder because the only way for them to get Ahsoka and Sabine and Hugh Yang back is yeah. if the space whales come back or they hijack the hyperspace rig, which based on the knowledge of the Imperial remnants, they're not gonna get access to that hyperspace ring. Yeah. If anything, if Thrawn is actually smart, he would destroy it, right? So that no one can use it. So that he um, covers tracks, you know? Right, because he's already there. And he would absolutely assure that no one's getting access to it. Um, Which is so interesting. Like, I, I, I don't want to say they put themselves in a hole because I don't know yet. Um, But it's a fear. Like, what, like, where, I don't know where to go from here. Um, I don't, I don't want the solution to be, like, convoluted. Where they're like... Oh, you know, we have another one, another like galaxy jumping ship that the Mandalorian happens to find. And he just, you know, he just used it, you know, so he could go get them. Because you if know you're doing they, a movie, they all need to be there. You know what they could end up doing? Okay. Assuming they don't do a season two. Right. But I feel like if they were going to do a season two, we would already know and it would already be in production because right. you would think it would have to come out before Mando season four slash movie. Right. Because according to Dave Filoni, that is supposed to wrap up and bring together 
all of like the Mandoverse. So that concludes right. the Mandalorian, Book of Boba Fett, and Ahsoka. Right. Which maybe, hopefully, this is it. And they let my right. girl Ahsoka rest after this. Right. And they're done. And then we can keep doing other new stuff. Uh, which honestly, I think a movie is a great idea. I don't I know. I really like that idea. I liked the idea. I, I really liked the idea before they brought in all this stuff with Ahsoka. Yeah. Because now it feels like there's too much to do in a two and a half hour movie. I'm all for seeing a Star Wars movie in theaters, which by the way, yeah. forgot to mention this ep- episode five of Ahsoka went out to select theaters in select cities, which is the first time a Disney plus original episode has ever been shown somewhere outside of, of Disney Plus that wasn't like a oh we're doing an early screening right. at Comic Con or right. whatever, which to me says that Disney is realizing that Disney Plus is not as profitable because this announcement of like it going to theaters came like two weeks after they announced the Steel Books for mm-hmm. the Disney Plus shows, so it was like they're they were start all at once they were doing these very little minute things that were like hey. Disney Plus is not making the money we want it to make, so how can we get revenue from people who may not be subscribed to the service? Mm-hmm. So, I, don't I know. think that's a great move in the right direction. No, At it least absolutely I hope it is. is. So that's really cool. I I'm excited. I just, you know, Ahsoka as a you see, it's just hard because if you do a show with all three of them. With Din Djarin, Boba Fett, Ahsoka, you're still balancing screen time. And I almost feel like, I feel like a movie is creatively limiting where you could do two and a half hours. You'd have to do two and a half to three hours. But it's almost limiting to the point where they wouldn't need to waste a second. Where I feel like if they did a show, they would do like eight episodes the first four episodes would be leading up to another four episodes that are actual like an actual story that you want to tell you know in in a nice in the nicest way possible but i feel like if they did a movie you essentially wouldn't you wouldn't get to waste any time and you would just be like boom here's your huge finale like go for it so that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at, but I also wouldn't be opposed to a show. Like I'm pretty open. Um, I just want to see Star Wars in the movie theater again. <laughs> okay, okay. So I think we have gone wrong somewhere. Oh, okay. Because I'm I'm reading here. Apparently, season four was never confirmed to be a movie. It was oh. highly speculated to be a movie. Interesting. I thought that was confirmed as well. Because, so according to this article that I'm reading, a Lucasfilm leaker claims the ongoing WGA and sag after which the WGA strike is over, but the sag after right. strike still um, persists. But it apparently okay. has forced studio execs to examine different options for the future of Star Wars. According to the leak, the strikes may make the two seasons of television needed to set up Dave Filoni's movie that's reportedly The Mandalorian Season 4 and Ahsoka Season 2 difficult to finish in time. As a result, The Mandalorian Season 4 may be truncated into a movie released after Rey's sequel film, which isn't slated for release until May 2026. So so that's a lot to unpack there. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So, one... There's three um, Star Wars movies on the docket right now. One yeah. is the sequel with Rey, which I thought was a show. Apparently, it's not. It's a nope. movie. Unless it's supposed to be both. Uh, like, the movie sets up the show or vice versa. Right. I don't know. Um, and then a prequel about the Dawn of the Jedi, which is some High Republic stuff, which is great. That's new mm-hmm. stuff. That's and a great idea. the Mandoverse film. So that was always a separate thing from season four. So it seems okay. like they did have Mando season four and Ahsoka season two built into the plan. Which okay. means it wouldn't be as harsh of a jump to get to the conclusion. 
Okay. And I think, I think, I really hope this is how it plays out because you do kind of need those, what, Mando is always eight episodes? And so is Ahsoka? Yeah. Um, you kind of need those eight Mando episodes because there are those like Imperial remnants who are working with Moff Gideon. Yeah. And now that Thrawn is back, how does that change things? Where's the timeline on the yeah. Mandoverse on that? And then yeah. Ahsoka wise, Ahsoka and Sabine, two major players in this like final confrontation, aren't even in the same galaxy. So how right. do they get back? Ezra is obviously going to be like, hey guys, Thrawn is here. Right. But also Ahsoka and Sabine are kind of stuck back there. So how do we get back there? Right. And I think, huh. I don't think it'll be as hard to get them back as we think it is. Because the easy play is for Ezra to communicate with the Purgle, the space whales again. Right. And go back to that galaxy. That's how we got there in the first place. I know you haven't right. watched Rebels, but at the end of Rebels, uh, Thrawn is like trying to take over Ezra's home planet. And Ezra calls in the Purgle. They like tie up Thrawn and his Star Destroyer. And then they all jump to the other galaxy. Oh. So Ezra and Thrawn are both lost, which is why they're both on that planet together. Okay. So Ezra uh... has Ezra has always had a very strong connection through the Force with animals and creatures. That's kind of like his okay. Force quirk that makes him different. So he could, it's just in thing. theory, in theory, communicate with the whales again, take a ship back, get Ahsoka and Sabine, and come back. Because he can... Like communicate with the purgle, or something. Okay. Okay. So it won't be as complicated to get them back as we think, but that also doesn't need eight episodes. So right. what? What do What's we the fill move? the rest of the space with? Right. Because and that's the my New concern. Republic kind of has to act now, because right. you have this person, Ezra Bridger, who is supposedly lost to time and supposed to be dead, telling you, "Hey." I came back on Thrawn's Star Destroyer. He's alive. He's back in our galaxy. This is bad. So they yeah. have that concrete evidence that they were looking for to act. But here's the yeah. interesting part is I don't think the New Republic is built to handle something like this. And they've been no, put in that situation intentionally. Because these Imperial Remnants is what goes on to become the First Order. So I think what we're going to see in supposed Mando season four, Ahsoka season two, and this movie is the final fall of the Empire, the New Republic's first real confrontation with any antagonistic force, Yep. and the rise of the First Order, which is something that was missing from episode seven, was like, yep. oh, the First Order is just the Empire and they're here, and we never knew why they were so similar to the Empire, we never knew how they came into power. How did this yeah. like new Republic with all of our favorite characters like Luke Khan and Leia, how did they let another empire rise up? And right. this is starting to fill those gaps and be like, here's how I, we I got like from that. point A to point B. I appreciate that. I like that. And we said this earlier, like they're kind of playing catch up on the sequels where it's like, if we just like really fill in every little gap with the sequels, which there's a lot of them, then maybe we'll like the sequels. Who's to say? I but think I would view episode seven a lot differently if all of that plays out the way I just described it. Right. And you like know I, a lot if more I just about knew. how. Because, right. yeah, one kind of disappointing thing is Thrawn is not anywhere to be seen in seven, eight, and nine. Which right. means that he's going to die right. in this or Mandoverse again, movie. You know, whatever, yeah. But, and I was talking about this with a coworker, is that doesn't necessarily mean he doesn't have an impact. Right, exactly. Because he could inspire General Hux or General right. Hux's dad who came before him. Like, there's definitely other people he can inspire that are high right. ranking in the First Order. It doesn't mean he does nothing. Right. Yeah. It doesn't mean, oh, he's there and then he dies and he's gone. Right. Like, he can so... still destroy a lot of stuff. Um, interesting. Interesting. Here's what I'll say to kind of like summarize as we close out. Yeah. 
despite my gripes that I had with the show, because I really felt like after episode four, I was a little turned off until episode eight. Yeah. Like end of episode seven, episode eight. I wasn't that into it. Um, or no, I mean, ep- end of episode six when we get Ezra, I wasn't really yeah. into episode seven, then episode eight. That's what I, that's what I was referring to. Yeah. Um, the Clone Wars flashbacks really turned me off. Not a huge fan of that. But just in this conversation alone, I'm really excited about where this could go. Right, me too. Because it, it does feel like that MCU level, all of these individual things are now building to this big thing. Right. Which is and fine to do the connected universe if you have the forethought. Like, I think maybe when Mando Season 1 came out, this wasn't the plan. But by the time they got to Season 2, because if you think by the time they got to Season 2, the Ahsoka show was greenlit. Seasons 3 and 4 were greenlit. Like, they knew where this was going yeah. since Season 2. So they're able to work all of those things together. Book of Boba Fett. They're able to bring like all this stuff together for this big culmination. And I'm, I'm really excited to see where it goes because it could, could, big could with like air quotes and asterisks yep. could be the best Star Wars content we've gotten from Disney. Not could. overall, but just from Disney. And as I said earlier... Right. They've lowered that bar, but right with every show, like you get Mando season one, every good show it goes. And then you get Rogue One, or Rogue One came before, and then you get like Solo, and then you get like Mando season two, and then you get Andor, and then you get like certain parts of Ahsoka, and like you're slowly raising that bar back right. up. You're like, oh, okay, wait, Star this, Wars can be good. I'm actually wait. kind of interested in this right. Ray sequel movie. Like there's. Right. A lot of potential for where that right. could go. Like, it just feels good to be interested in Star Wars again. Right. Like, I'm very... Like, minor gripes with the show aside, Dave Filoni has made us interested again. And yes, that's absolutely. really what's most important. And so, like, you can have a whole discussion about, like, well, I preferred, like, this version of the character, this and that. Was that... That kind of like all amiss to nothing because we care again, and that's really good news for Star Wars. Yeah. So that's kind of my summary is I'm excited for the future. I enjoyed this even though I had little context. And honestly, I've never wanted to watch The Clone Wars more. And so that that is a victory for, for old Nick over there. So... Unless you have anything else to say, I think we can wrap up. Um, no. <laughs> All right, perfect. No. Well. Um, I was excited to do this episode, but I'm also ready to be done. I Because my allergies loved, are killing me and I want to die. I've loved this episode, and but I'm ready to go to bed. So I feel that. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Nerdiest Podcast. If you want to stay up to date with the podcast, you can follow us on Instagram and on Twitter at Nerdiest Podcast. Or is it just The Nerdiest Podcast on Twitter, right? <laughs> uh, it's just Nerdiest Pod. Nerdiest Pod on Twitter, the Nerdiest Podcast on Instagram. And if you like what we do here, you can support the show by checking out our merch with the links in the description. I'm sporting some right here if you're watching the video. So, it, or you can get our Patreon to get exclusive episodes, or you can join the Spotify memberships, whatever you'd like to do. We're just doing exclusive content on there. And it's super casual and super fun. It's a great community builder. And that's kind of what's up. Speaking of which, thank you so much to bearded mana for being part of the nerdiest max tier on patreon we love you good sir thank you so much but if you're tight on cash i understand me too the best way to support us is by leaving a five-star review on spotify or apple Podcasts or pandora or wherever you are listening and make sure you share the show with a fellow nerd make sure word of mouth is the best way for us to grow so thank you so much merch link in the description everything else in the description as well we hope to see you there and we will see you in the next episode until then uh bye